WNVLF. Hey everybody, my name is Paul and welcome back to the W1VLF lab. Um, if you made it through yesterday's video about how to tell whether or not your SDR was locked to GPS, um, I had, was thinking about that a little bit and uh, I decided to do a test um, a little bit, a little bit different. I'm trying something new here. I'm going to do a split screen. Um, and what I did was I made two recordings. Um, one with the SDR unlocked using the internal oscillator and one with it locked. And each, each one is an hour long and each one of them um, has a, uh, each one of the recordings was done under a 75 watt light bulb. Um, the purpose of the light bulb was to change the ambient temperature of the receiver. So the receiver um, temperature started off at 78 degrees and ended at something like 99 or 100, but it was relatively plus or minus a degree in both cases. So what I'm going to do is you're going to see two one hour long recordings that go down in time. Of course, they won't be one hour long, they'll be about four minutes long. And what one, one will be a unlocked or, or a using the internal oscillator on, on the uh, AirSpy R2, excuse me, the R2. Yeah, AirSpy R2. And the other one is using that little uh, geo, um, uh, GPS Leo Bodner board. Um, so it's about a four minute run, and um, 30 minutes in, I turned the light off. So you'll see uh, the, the direct effect of heat. Now, 102, excuse me, 101 degrees for the surface temperature of that is not so bad. Um, when you consider that if you're running this radio in a cold environment, it could be down as low as 40 degrees or as high as 100 degrees. So um, just, just to, be, to be certain, there is some drift with, a, um, with the local oscillator that's inside or the master clock that's inside there. Although it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. <clears throat> um, I'm going to be using as a reference signal to watch in the waterfall that same channel 33 GPS locked di digital TV carrier. Let me just look at my notes here. Oh, the, uh, the bandwidth that you'll see on the screen is plus or minus 25 hertz, so 50 hertz. So if something drifts to the left, it's low in frequency. If something drifts to the right, it's high in frequency. And again, um, the start stop temperatures for both of these tests were... Uh, 78 degrees plus or minus the degree and about 101 degrees plus or minus the degree. Um, so I'm not going to say which is which but I think you'll uh, you'll be able to notice which it is as soon as it gets rolling. So um, I guess that's it. Let me see, did I miss anything? Oh and I did not, I have never calibrated um, the R2. I've always run it with the um, with the, uh, the Leo Bodner board, the external uh, LO. And, and the reason for that is a lot of times I'm looking for signals that aren't there uh, until some particular propagation phenomenon comes along, whether it be aircraft scatter, meteor scatter, or something like that. And I want to know, plus or minus a few hertz, that I'm in the right spot to be looking for that. So that's, uh, that's the reason why I have that board. Anyway, let's head back over to the uh, ham shack and... Um, Take a look at this, and if the paint is all dry in your house and you have nothing to look at, you might find this a little bit interesting. Thanks a lot.